it does scale pretty well um, and like Loki, it's kind of a flex. Like you can flex at top mm. in some cases. I don't know if they'll flex at mid, but um, yeah, yeah. I think it's a solid first pick. Yeah, I've been kind of surprised to see it not being played in solo lanes much in pro at all. Because in solo queue, it feels like much more prevalent as a, as kind of like a flex. Uh -huh. um, I know Nemesis was playing it a ton mid, and people were kind of watching him. I know I was watching Lorlo a lot when he came out, and he was playing it a ton top lane. I think you know definitely as a counter pick or as an answer, it can be pretty strong in some matchups. Yeah, I think um, if they pick something where you can just farm stacks, uh, something that doesn't have huge dive potential. I played it against like Fiora one game in solo mm -hmm. queue. Mm. It felt super good to just be able to like build Swifties. You're and just kite. farming queues on them. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think top lane, if anything, there was a. Um, I think Damwon in Korea did play a top, although he did go like this corrupt tank build. Uh, are you talking about the grasp stuff? I've seen I've seen some people doing a lot of like grasp tanky uh, smolder top as well. Yeah, and just playing off the stacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it can definitely work. I mean, there's a lot of power just in the, in the obviously, the true damage and the execute as well. Uh, so we're going to have Illusion locked in, Volibear on the other side. Volibear, obviously, really popular now on this patch, it feels like. Oh, yeah. Uh, has been getting stronger and stronger and is becoming really prevalent now. And even with Senna banned away, Nautilus is going to show up in this game without her. We've been seeing a lot of this guy here as well. They'll be playing that down in the bot lane alongside the Smolder for the side of Dignitas, and they'll lock in Talia for what I'm assuming is the mid lane. All right, so if you're in Sanity here, Talia's locked in. What kind of champion are you looking to play? I think Insanity's mindset is like, don't worry about me. My champion pool is so big. I can go four or five. Let's just lock our solid bot duo. They go Nami Lucian, classic combo. Um, I think a lot of options you can go mid here. Quay, I think, is good versus Talia. You can go Orianna for sure. Mm. Karma's still on the table. And all of these picks synergize pretty well with Volibear Jungle as well. How about for you personally? What would you play into this, just knowing the three champions on the enemy team comp so far? Um, I think I would probably favor Orianna, personally. That's okay. just me. I, I like the matchup versus Talia. I feel like there is solo kill potential throughout the game. And I mean, Orianna is just one of the best picks for mid, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's interesting seeing Lucian Nami come back. It's definitely not something that's been getting played a lot on this patch. Only four picks across all regions on 14-4. Um, but Lucian Nami, as you said, classic combo. Uh, and it was kind of interesting, you know, hearing hearing different people's opinions on on this you know, as a duo. I think it was um, Jan who was on Pros talking about this, and he said he felt that a lot of people kind of misunderstood the point of Lucian Nami. He felt that it's less about you know the laning power, and a lot of lanes are actually more 50-50, and it's more about the control around mid and how you can actually play off the ways uh, around mid lane that people can't actually challenge you there. If they step too far, you can chuck them down, so it allows you to have first move to objectives more in mid game. Um, and that was kind of how he was looking at the power of this pick and this duo. Uh, you know, how do you see Lucian Nami and, and kind of how it fits into pro play? Yeah, I think I kind of interpreted it similarly to you, where you expect the Nami Lucian to be able to get a lead in lane and then transition to like a strong mid game with a gold advantage. But I, I do agree that even if you don't find the greatest advantage in lane, that it's still strong in mid game with the spike, like just as Nami gets um, like one real mid game stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, well, hold on now. We've got the Huey being hovered with the Orianna that you called out earlier. Dignitas respecting that sort of line of thinking, banning that out, also removing the Udir, taking out one of those options. That's a pretty solid pick to choose for top lane into almost any matchup. Pick that one blind. They don't want him taking that. Double jungle ban from Shopify, making sure that both Vi and Poppy are off the table, and they will lock in the Huey. We got Kobe standing by for a little bit of trash talk as we get into the second half of the draft. Welcome to the cage match between Shopify Rebellion and Dignitas. We've got Insanity and XU. XU, I'm coming to you first. The jungler for Dignitas. Who is the weakest link on this Shopify team? Who are you ganking? Who's the easiest? They're all free ganks. They're all Everyone free. can die, yeah. I mean, David doesn't have a dash this game, so uh, he's a pretty easy target. Mm. Uh, you're PVA, man. You struggle with that on its own. Bro, you can't like, I have a 90% win rate on Sedge. What do you have on Huey? Well, you oh, just got what? demoted to Sejuani duty for a reason. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we got to win, you know? We need this one. I don't know if you'll win. Yeah. <laughs> the classic, fun. the classic. All right. Good, clean game. Uh, expect those ganks uh, or the mind games that are coming with it. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Let's get into it. <laughs> Oh my god, Insanity it, is too funny, man. <laughs> uh, first the eyebrows yesterday, I don't know if you caught that at the, at the beginning of the day where he's doing the eyebrow wiggles to the camera and stuff. <laughs> the guy's cracking me up. 
Not afraid to flex a little personality there, but it will be the Gnar locked in for Dignitas for Rich in the top lane. This Sejuani picked up for XU like they were talking about. What will this final choice in this draft be for Shopify? How do they want to navigate the matchup into the Gnar? Remember the Udir, the Renekton, both already banned out by Dignitas. Really the only two top lane picks here in the band so far. Shopify going to take their time. Shopify about have, this one. have basically no engage at Could all. Could be Chase. Oh, I was just trying to say that. You, you think they're just going to play kind of like longer range? Yeah, yeah. Chase is, uh, you know, classic. Like, a, a lot of top laners love playing that into Nar. Mm -hmm. Chase just got pretty strong buffs for laning. Um, so I like the pick. And Fake Out is like a Chase guy. He loves playing it. Which comp would you rather be playing on? Um... I think I'd rather be Dignitas side. If, if I'm just viewing from the mid lane purely, I think I like playing such. Uh, I mean, I like to play Talia with this uh, Sejuani CC to play off of or Nautilus CC. Um, that's just me, though, personally. Yeah, and I will say, you know, as much as I think Jace is a solid matchup into Nar, we see this a lot in, in pro play where people play these compositions like Shopify has, where it's very low to, to, to none uh, as far as hard engage goes. Yeah. And if you make any sort of mistakes with this, the game falls apart completely, right? Because you don't have pick really to be able to pull it back. I think it becomes a lot more difficult. You're very dependent, I think, on playing from a lead, on being first to the objective. Whereas on the Dignitas side, they have so many go buttons. You can cut people off with the Talia ult. You have, you know, potential flanks from Meganar. You have engage from Nautilus, from Sejuani. Like, there's so many ways it feels like to start the fights and to find picks. Shopify, I think their composition seems so much less forgiving to me. And yeah. that makes it tough, right? Like, especially when we're getting towards this end of the season, when we're getting towards only one week left to play before we make it into playoffs after this one. With how close these standings are, with how crazy everything's been, you got to make sure that every single game you're putting through right now doesn't look like anything's too crazy in terms of how it's going to be. Sejuani back on the Aftershock. The Sejuani we saw earlier in the day was rocking the Summoner Spellbook. Generally, that is an adaptation playing into Trundle, going back to the Aftershock in games that do not have his presence in there. As always, going to be keeping an eye on Tomo this game in particular, seeing how fast he stacks up, getting to those critical breakpoints for the 25 early on and then the 225 later for the Execute. I will say I'm a little bit surprised that Tomo's actually playing cleanse. There's not that many good things to cleanse. Like, sure, there's some sort of CC potentially coming out from Huey. There's the Volibear Q. That's about it. There's yeah. not really a lot of value to be there's got from this. Shopify was like spam pinging that he has cleansed. So yeah. I think they're really happy to see it. Okay. I, mean, I feel like when you're already playing kind of a losing 2v2 bot and then you're playing cleanse, which is going to be useless in the 2v2, like that just makes it even harder. Yes. That's rough. Yeah, I feel like maybe his expectation was that Lucian might pack Ignite. Like aggressive mm, Lucian players yeah. will do that. Just try to cleanse the Ignite. But even then, wouldn't you rather, if you're just going it purely for that sort of angle, I feel like Barrier or something is going to be more value. I agree with you, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if they're going to be punished. We've seen some smaller games go very tragic, including one yep. yesterday from Tactical, uh, where things went really bad really early. And it can super push you back on how fast you're going to be able to stack this up. The new kind of modern build we're seeing now is people still sticking with Essence Reaver, but it seems to be Essence Reaver into Shoujin. Obviously, it gives you a ton of CDR. You're going to have no limit on the amount of mana you have and hopefully really be able to ramp up how much you're stacking in the mid game as B-Boy and Zazel dropping that deep ward, looking to see if they can get a little bit of chip damage on them as they're walking to lane. But I think Tomo and Isles being very safe, not going to challenge through the tri bush. They know yeah. there's no shot you can actually scrap with that 2v2. So just going to be playing it safe and walking the long way around. One of those situations where you look at what you might gain from that choice, and there's really just nothing there that's going to go positive. So just you can try gain to, one stack. Try to get the stacks going stack in the first lane Good instead. Trade. Yeah, great, great choices, great choices. But remember that in the previous games we've seen Tomo on this champion. Usually he'll hit that 225 breakpoint around the 23 minute mark somewhere. So that's where I'm going to be expecting this one to be as well, unless things just completely go awry one way or the other. You can see junglers both starting off in their red side quadrant and looks like it's going to be full clear here from both. Yeah, you can really optimize the stacks, especially if you're scrapping early, um, you know, and especially if you are playing against some of these easier lanes, uh, then you can get a lot both from CS and from kind of poking away on your opponents. The fastest I've seen in competitive is, is sub 20, you know, in 19 minute-ish range. Um, that's about as fast as I've seen it. In solo queue, you can get it really fast, but it'll be interesting to see how they can do it. And also, I mean, even in that game from Tactical, he got it around 26 minutes after an absolutely abysmal start. We had no stacks at all because his team put him mid and then we're donating him wolves and raptors over and over and over. Ooh, XU forced to flash out. I was thinking we were just going to get the full clear, but no Boogie taking advantage of that hard winning matchup in the 1v1 there with the Volibear versus Sejuani forcing the summoner spell out of the Dignitas jungle. Yeah, I was going to be going in for a hook there, trying to trade back. Nice seismic shove in from Dove. Uh, it's getting pretty scrappy in mid lane here. 
So talk to us about the, this from the, the Huey point of view, uh, Pope. You know, you're saying you feel this is a winning matchup for Huey. What is it about this matchup that you, you kind of like from that side? Uh, I think Talia is always susceptible to just tanking EE and a W auto. Wow, this guy took two turret shots. Ooh, yeah, that was that was pretty rough for Shopify's bottom lane there. A little unlucky. And you could see that Tomo was really worried about the dive. This is something we've seen happen a lot to Smolders, where the wave gets stacked on them. Uh, they're getting pushed in on the wave. The jungler comes down. We knew Boogie wasn't there, but he did not. And Ectio had been pushed out of their bot side jungle, so I think he was very nervous that Volibear, you know, could have been down there, could have been wrapping behind. So that's why Tomo and Isles did back off. But Bvoy takes a couple of turret shots that allows them to be able to step back up. Of course, pick up the farm, and they're just going to try to bounce the wave as Bvoy's gone back to base here. Uh, and then Tomo will be able to reset. And he's in a pretty good spot. Uh, they obviously, do they have a Targon charge? They do have a Targon charge for the cannon, so we'll be able to crash this, no problem. Up to 11 stacks now. All right, usually you like to see them grab that 25 breakpoint around, I think the six or seven minute mark has been where we're seeing it in pro play. Kind of depends a lot on early on if you can hit the double snot bubble on both yeah. enemy players at the same time. Since you do not have the AOE on your queue for the farming just yet, that'll be one of your faster stacking mechanics. As you can see, Boogie again, just trying to place down some vision here in the enemy jungle. Take advantage of the fact that he's got that early power on the volley bear and track X you as adeptly as he can. So we're seeing tier for both Wei and uh, Antalya. You were talking earlier about how you kind of prefer uh, Lost Chapter builds and even like Luden's Rush and stuff like that on Talia. So talk me through kind of the differences between some of these builds and what you think, you know, Dove might be going for. Yeah, well, when I play solo queue, I feel like Luden's is just better because you spike faster and have more damage. Definitely in competitive, you never, almost never see anyone going Luden's. Everyone almost goes Seraphs with the, uh, you know, the durability mm. and you have increased mana pool. You're staying in lane longer, there's less fighting, so. Pretty standard stuff. Um, man, kind of a shame Shopify wasn't able to win harder in the early game. Sechu was only like three camps for a while, whereas Voli had full cleared. And then Bot was like winning pretty hard, and then he tanked two turret shots. And they couldn't even pick up that plate, actually. That plate just died to creeps. A little bit, a little bit rough on that one. Still about a plus two wave advantage for B-Boy up over Tomo, but... Tomo will be able to equalize some of that here, farming up these minions as they're about to collide into the turret. You can see on the left side of your screen there, the levels. Almost all of our solo laners now level seven. You can see Rich just tagging it now as another one of those a chews flies out from Tomo as he gets closer and closer to the 25 CS mark. Yeah, that was really good CSing from Tomo. I don't think he missed a single one. Uh, you can even get so many of the kind of like awkward health minions because you have, you know, auto Q as an auto reset. You have the W as well in there to help prep. So I uh, did a very good job. I don't think he missed a single CS, you know, with that wave pushing into him. Uh, even though B-Boy and Zazel were looking for a little bit of pressure. Boogie, though, going to take this time to start up the dragon. We can see XU will get eyes on this. We'll see if they think that they can do anything about it as their bot lane is pushed in. Uh, and Sanity, we know, is going to be in the area and uh, will be pushing XU back. And Sanity will not land any of the CC there, but doesn't need to. Just forcing him out of the way, making sure that there's no contest here on the Drake. That is a Drake number one secured at six and a half minutes into the game, so pretty early. Also not trading it away for the Void Grubs at the same time as Fake God versus Rich. The 1v1, Fake God sidestepping away there, flashing out of the range of the Wallop. Returning another out of attack, but does not want to overcommit. Rich walks back away. Both of them now very low on HP, but critically the difference is Fake God now without Flash. We'll see if Dignitas can move anybody else up and punish that here in the next five minutes. And Rich just got the Honey Fruits as well, so he actually doesn't even have to base. And if that Boulder Toss was going to connect, you know, maybe Fake God would have had to Flash even earlier. Might have potentially not been able to get that little bit of chunk down onto Rich. And Rich maybe could have looked to actually follow in. But with no TP, the wave will crash. I'm not sure if it's a Cannon Wave on top or not. Um, it is, so he's not going to lose as much. You know, Jay should be able to get back to get most of this, but still going to be feeling pretty damn good about things as Dignitas, you know, you talked about the three winning lanes, Pope Belter on, on the Shopify side. Dignitas seems to have neutralized these lanes pretty damn well. You know, we're seven and a half minutes in. It's only a 300 gold lead and the one dragon. Yeah, I mean, the way that Jay's top plays with and without Flash is so different. I think that's actually huge for, mm -hmm. for Nar in order to just be able to farm out the lane now. Um, this chase is so scared. He even QE'd the bush, you know, and gave up the cannon creep because he's so afraid now. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty sad as the chase side. Honestly, I started going just conquer on chase every game so I can just fight to the death. With the phase rush, he was just kind of losing out 1v1. Yeah. 66 to 58 
for farm. I mean, plus one wave advantage isn't really anything to write home about. You can see in the top of the screen right now, about a 700 gold lead globally for Shopify. The one Drake, but all three grubs in the first rotation did go over to Dignitas in the meantime. So we'll see how Shopify is able to respond to that later on in the game, or if Dignitas will continue being able to have enough control over the top side river to hit that six grub mark. Rich back up in top side now, just continuing to farm things up. A little bit behind in farm, but not too much. Bottom lane, we'll check in on Smolder. 28 stacks, eight and a half minutes in. So maybe a little bit slow on arriving at that point. But now he's got the AOE as the Nami wave flies out. Tomo summons Mom. B-Boy gets chunked yeah. a little bit by that. B-Boy does not have the resources to continue to fight here. So they will have to use the heal to escape as Dignitas was ready to reinforce with XU. Yeah, nicely done there. It was a good little catch on the Isles. Isles tried to obviously buffer the hook, but he was so close to the wall, it didn't actually dodge anything anyway. So Flash was forced as the ultimate was committed there from Zazel. But Tomo getting a good trade back. Now up to 39 stacks, it looks like there. So really going to start to accelerate as you start to pick up more and more CDRs. You get more points in those abilities. Uh, you can really ramp the stacking up here pretty quickly. Uh, and is feeling pretty confident to just step forward and trade with those Qs as well. Uh, especially when you're playing Fleet, you know, the, the Q does proc the Fleet. When you get in the enemy champion, you have a minion. You obviously get a lot of a bigger heal there and can use the move speed just back on out. XU going to spot Boogie, though, as he was looking to wrap around, and that's going to defuse any sort of play. So talk to me about, you know, from Dove's point of view now, he's got CDR boots, he's been, you know, level 6 for a while, obviously he's up to level 8 now. You know, how do you actually get out of lane here without giving up too much, without making it too obvious? Because Insanity is obviously just going to try to relentlessly shove you in and keep you locked under your turret. How do you force yourself to be able to get active on the map? Yeah, I think it's hard to gank mid, actually, with... Um I feel like the problem with Sag plus AP is that the enemy mid can just itemize Mercs really easily and just be pretty much unkillable. So he, he needs to do this. He just clears the wave and then he just hovers one time, sees if there's anything to do. If not, you have to go back and catch the mid wave. Right. Plus 400 gold for Shopify. So still very, very little difference between these two. And honestly, for both teams, you really want to find a win here. The last three games remaining, particularly from Dignitas' side, we'll talk about them first because they are the ones slightly behind right now in terms of the gold. Their last three remaining opponents in the Super Week are C9, TL, and FlyQuest. That is not an easy lineup. That is not an easy schedule to have to face here at the very end as you're trying to make sure you don't end up being one of those last couple of teams to not qualify for the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really tough, right? You know, these teams that are having these very difficult strength of schedules, every single win is incredibly important. You know, trying to pick up wins, trying to keep your, your hopes alive, uh, you know, for a championship, for that MSI berth as well, uh, means a lot. And over on the other side, we think about Shopify, they've still also got to play C9, but then they have Energy and 100 Thieves as well. And obviously this whole split has been very competitive. There's been a lot of parity between pretty much everyone, but these are all still teams that everybody looks at and you're like, okay, that could be a pretty scary matchup. So I think for both of these squads, you're looking at this matchup as probably your easiest remaining game left for the regular season. Yeah, absolutely, right? You know, it's, it's, it is going to be a, a difficult spot. Uh, five wins, you know, maybe would be enough to get you into playoffs. We'll have to see how things all shake out. Obviously, right. we'll be looking at playoff scenarios a lot more next week, which is going to be the final week of the season. It is a super week, though, so it will be three games remaining after they finish up here today. Now, you can see the strength total for both these teams really tough, um, but it is going to be a, an exciting finish, I think, to the LCS. It's been so much parity, and that has kind of continued into this week. We've seen teams you know, that are even sitting at the bottom still be very competitive, you know, uh, energy, you know, nearly losing earlier today. We've had, you know, a lot of our teams at the bottom um, really be able to step up and, and actually take games off the top teams and threaten a lot of these teams in the midfield as well. All right, Shopify, they're on to the second Drake of the game. Just about on timer from the first. Remember, the first one fell six and a half minutes in, so about an extra 30 seconds required to start this one up here for them. But it looks like once again, there'll be no contest. Shopify secure Drake number two for themselves. And we are going to get another Cloud Rift here today. You can see a lot of On My Way pings coming out on the Grub Pit as well, recognizing, hey, that's already up there. Dignitas got the first three. They want to try to be able to challenge for this. Remember, so many times we see junglers just do a quick drive-by, smite away one of the Grubs, stop them from getting that full six and the bonus that you would have from double Void Might spawns. Right now, Boogie is heading right there. Also worth noting, we talked earlier about Fake God losing the Flash and how that affected the Jace matchup. There was not any subsequent punish on him for that. He's got the Flash up, ready to go again, so we can continue to try to play more aggressively on that champion. 
as Shopify is just going to get their bottom lane right back down to the turret. Try not to lose too much more to this. XU is still hanging out here, but B-Boy and Zazel will make it back here in time. It's also interesting, Boogie probably going for, for Iceborne here on the Volibear. You know, it is obviously a pretty popular build, but I feel like I've been seeing more and more people go towards Thunder Sky and Tank. I know mm -hmm. Kobe plays uh, basically exclusively Volibear these days. He's in the one-trick status, and uh, he feels that that build is a lot stronger. Thunder Sky obviously just has so much value and a lot of these early scraps. We're going to see if they can find a turnaround here on B-Void. Oh, they send Mom over the top of the tidal wave, turning around back at him. Means that they cannot close the gap in time. Zazel protecting b -Boy as he makes his way back underneath the Tier 1 turret to stop Tomo and Isles in their tracks. So do you feel like Shopify have gotten enough out of the early game here? I mean, they got a couple dragons. That's really their only advantage. I, I don't really think so. I mean, Smolder has farmed more plates than Lucian has. I, uh, I, I don't really love it. I, I feel like I'm just seeing Lucian flipping ulti on cooldown. Whoa. Here comes the dive, though. B-Boy in some trouble, trying to get away from this one. Does have to pop the flash below half HP, and there was a lot of Dignitas players ready to commit for that one. Isles also very low, though. Going to be a reset for the Dignitas support, too. Yeah, it's kind of felt to me like the, a lot of these cullings, B-Boy, I think, is, is just kind of feeling the pressure to get something going, you know, realizing they're not getting enough done, they're not being able to create space in lane, and he's kind of just letting it rip. I mean, maybe a little bit of like, ah, I got to make something happen. Yeah, I mean, he, he might be getting like a, a modest first strike payout, but definitely not what you want to see from Nami Lucian in lane. I feel like when it looks good, it's like we're dashing forward, we're like chunking them to one HP, they're missing CS. They're burning sums, but he's kind of just hitting Nautilus with all. All right. Engage comes out. Dignitas looking for Boogie, but the problem is Rich has to run. Isles now the focus. Fake God puts a little DPS into him, but Isles still walking away with about one third remaining. The first grub claimed by Shopify there, but the Herald is now on the map. So only a four grub game this time around, with Shopify having enough control over the top side river to immediately start up the Herald. Yeah, should be able to grab this Herald. Obviously, it was a bit of a dicey moment there for Miles. He had already used his summoners down on that failed bot dive. But now Smolder are going to be rotating over towards mid. They're going to shove a Dove down towards that bot lane. And I think with Sedge 1E, you should definitely be giving Raptors over to Tomo. It looks like that's going to be the case here. Mm. As once you have the AoE on the Q, you can just start stacking up so quickly by farming a lot of these jungle camps. You go mid, you farm the wave, you go to the sides, you farm those extra jungle camps, especially Raptors and Krugs. You can get so many extra stacks off of that really accelerate you to 125 where it just gets easier and easier and easier as you're picking up more cdr you're getting more aoe uh, and you can really accelerate to where we saw you know from from tactical even from a point where i want to see he was around like 50 stacks or something at this point in the game he still got to 225 by 26 minutes because he got yeah. such a massive amount uh, throughout this mid game and um, we'll see how quickly Tomo can stack it up and if he's going to be donated all those jungle camps as well. We talk about accelerating the pace of the game, accelerating the pace of your stacking or whatever, but unfortunately the reality of this game is no first blood in almost 16 minutes. <laughs> I am praying for a ring of fire from Nexus Blitz or something <laughs> along those lines as neither team has really found the opportunity to make any seriously aggressive plays. Uh, Pobelter, if you were on either squad, either perspective is fine, what's the big play that you would look for to really try to break things open here in this mid game? I think it's going to come down to third Drake. I feel like that's okay. usually the pressure timing when if, for example, your dig side, you're like, okay, we drafted scaling lanes. Let's kind of just scale up, give first two Drakes, then we can contest third. So I feel like it's about to get to that timing where maybe they're willing to butt heads, smolder with some stacks, everyone has some items. Yeah, when you're looking at the item completions, it's pretty even across the board here. So no major advantages have been picked up, honestly, on either side. You know, B-Boy obviously has been on Stormrizer for a while. We have the mandate in for Zazel. That's kind of that big one item spike for that Lucian Nami duo. And they're going to drop Herald Bot, so it should be a turret going down. Dove in trouble. Oh, Boogie with the flash for the engage, but now he's going to ult the tower so they can keep on diving. First blood over to Huey, and they're about to make it too. Boogie keeps himself alive. The Herald's going to be summoned up to take the turret as well, and Shopify Rebellion smacks him. We'll see if they can get anything back um, on the B-Boy here. The ulti oh. tags him. That was close. <laughs> that was way too close, man. The clutch Nami heal just to try and make sure that he does not die to Smolder's mom. But Shopify, now 2,000 gold in the lead. And Sanity shielded him as well with the WW there. Uh, the shield from from Huey, I think, actually kept him alive. Mm. It looked like that was insanely close uh, before that Nami heal landed. Way well, you're going to TP up towards top. They're going to try to keep the pressure onto these additional towers. And it looks like it is going to be Dignitas, though, getting the dragon. And if you get this uncontested dragon, 
that's kind of like the only thing that Shopify had going for them from the early game was the dragon stacking. So I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't elect to actually fight here. Didn't feel that they were in a good position to do it after the scrap on the bat side. And they're at least getting a little bit of gold out of the trade as they TP towards top. They get the tier one top. They got the tier one bot just before that. Uh, but this is just buying a lot of time. Dude, Boogie just gets popped. Dove working together with Rich. They find the punish there on the oh enemy jungler as that volley continues trying to invade, trying to control this territory, but it ain't gonna work out that time. Dignitas is on the board. Fika could get Dove here potentially. We'll see if he's gonna back off. Uh, is gonna respect the fact that XU's around. Knows he was warded because Jace started running this as soon as he walked through that brush. Yup. 131 stacks on Smolder as well, so it's time for that turbo farm point where he's going to be able to really, really get those stacks going as XU hangs out around the mid lane, looking for a potential play here. Popo, you talked about how the third Drake is the fight point, and we mentioned how, yeah, it ended up going for free over to Dignitas. If you're on the side of Shopify, are you happy to take the plus 2,000-ish gold lead in exchange for not having soul point, or would you have rather had the drink? I think they're happy with building a gold lead. I think the only thing that matters is, like, getting more gold, getting more items. I mean, these guys look reasonably strong now, actually. Lucian okay. got me both on two cores, so I think at this point, uh, like, mindset-wise, if I was Shopify, I would just be, like, happy that we finally made a play and got some kills on the board. Uh, whatever about the dragon, and okay. just look to make the next play. Oogie. Trying to get away there from that dredge line. Manages to find him over the wall, but not really anybody in range to follow it up. They go fishing with the Sejuani ulti, but B-Boy just steps out of the way of it. Not too worried about that. Dignitas seeing if they can find something there, maybe off of a freebie, but not wanting to really overcommit for anybody. Yeah, and you can see Tomo now is on those two items, so he has uh, the Shoujin completed as Ooh, well. Nice little damage. chunk comes through. Mm -hmm. And Jay's fishing with a Shock Blast as well. Uh, that's going to be tough. E auto. Yeah, I mean, that's that's Stormy's rapid fire, right? Your upfront burst is so high when you're proccing, obviously, you know, first strike, you have uh, the mandate proc, you have the E from the Nami, like all these things just hit all at the same time. Obviously, yeah. the criticism of this build is always that you're sacrificing sustained damage for that. Do you think, though, that it doesn't matter in this case that Shopify have enough sustained damage to kind of make up for it? I think if they keep fighting chunks like that, and then eventually if they can convert it into more control or, you know, push this mid turret, mm -hmm. then, then yeah, that's totally fine. It's always the question, right? Because we've seen some games, you know, I think back even way back to the start, and it was actually some turtle games, you know, in week one when he was playing really well on the Lucian, and he'd constantly be able to chunk people out, but never actually convert that into an objective, never actually convert that into a kill. They couldn't kind of push it over the edge. Um, you know, and it does start to become very difficult if you can't kind of, you know, have that straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak, where you start to get really a lot more. I feel like it does fit the theme and the identity of the composition, particularly in this game, though, with how you guys were talking earlier back during draft about how there's so many more options for Dignitas to just go in for a fight, whereas Shopify's going to have to try to poke him. Fake God, though, he might be in a rough spot. The shutdown over to Rich as Dove gets the shield from the Seraphs, and Boogie doesn't have the damage to take him out just yet. B-Boy swoops in, and he finds that quick one-two pop. He gets back away thanks to the healing from the Nami, and Boogie's ready to lock down Rich. He should die in the meantime, oh. but instead he's going to walk away insanity swoops in and spiraling despair consumes xu a double kill back over to the way dignitas lose three shopify lose two we finally got a little bit of pvp on summoner's rift man boogie got out of there with no health whatsoever that missed all from xu though really has to hurt felt like they could have got more there he actually ended up picking up the lucian off just the explosion part mm -hmm. kind of funny yeah Omo trying to get away, does get caught by Insanity. A little bit more damage will take him out, and it's the Summon Airy that does the last little bit of damage he needs. Tomo not respecting Insanity's damage potential. Yeah, a little bit surprised that he elected not to flash or, or anything there. Um, I guess just didn't think that it was going to be a way out, but we can see the fight one more time. You know, Rich finishing off the turret, gets the Meganar into the turret there. And Dove, you know, able to actually burst down Fake Out quite a bit, but Fake Out critically got a lot of damage out before he went down. Talks through the rest of the fight here, Pope. Oh man, so Sejuani like Q flash W misses everything. It looks tragic, but actually, look, he walks into the ulti explosion and he dies. <laughs> Ooh, that's that's an oof. And that's I thought, an oof. For I thought me. this Volibear was gonna burn to death, but he lives with like one HP with the Triumph proc. Man, that is some sad stuff, actually. Like, you look at Sejuani ulti, you always think about the lockdown, the initial burst, yeah. the 
the after effect is just, you know, a side thought, the a secondary puff. thing in your mind. Yeah, it's like, what does that even do? That never does any damage, well, but it, it does just Lucian. enough damage does. to kill <laughs> Lucian in that moment. But it looks like Shopify and Dig are ready to square off here for the next Drake. Remember, it's a two to one lead favoring Shopify as they had that total Drake control early on. Now the engage coming out from Isles. He flashes back away so they don't find the counter attack. Nice, Mom finding its way onto two as Zazel and Boogie trying to disengage here for a second. Dignitas falling back after their initial attempt does not find any full kills. Still about 3,000 gold favoring Shopify. And considering they did not get bursted down super low, now they're going to start up the Drake. They're going to try to force their opponents to either come into them or they're just going to have to take something else as a consolation prize. And it looks like the Tier 1 turret will be just that. Tomo the one to take it down. The Smolder up to 178 stacks. The Drake probably going the way of Shopify Rebellion, but XU's made his way into the pit. He's trying to challenge for this. Has to Arctic Assault back over the wall. And the Drake goes the way of Shopify. They're now on Soul Point. Yeah, they moved to Soul Point there. We're able to get enough of a chunk out early and I think Rich you know, going in with the Meganar tried to get the ulti down into insanity but he flashes away from that and I think the fight's going to kind of dissipate afterwards and Shopify do have a little bit more sustain obviously Zazel's healing them back up they have position on that dragon so very hard for Dignitas to fight from there so they just try to take what they can get which was that tier one mid yeah I think you really have to convert that hook uh, he landed a hook on Jace I was surprised to not see that turn into like a Talia combo or follow up with Smolder combo Yeah, just weren't really able to find it. I mean, Tomo, you know, used the ult pretty early, was across a couple of members there. Uh, it's going to be going in towards the BT. Uh, makes sense. There's quite a bit of chunk, quite a bit of poke over on the other side. You know, we saw how much Solution can do, uh, but Insanity on the way can have pretty good poke. There's a Jace as well. So just going to be going in towards BT, get that sustain, be able to start shrugging off a lot of the poke that they can dash out. And then it's pretty much always rapid fire next. Tomo, though. Yeah, we got some problems here. B-Void trying to escape with a follow-up from XU and Rich coming in from the side. They found the enemy AD carry. And now, as the Volley oh, Bear tries to escape, bear. it ain't gonna happen, man. Double kill for Dove and Dignitas got a 5v3. Baron's the call. Enemy jungler is down. Fake God and Insanity still have a lot of range to try to mess with these guys, try to get them off of there. But it's a tall order. Baron down to about half HP now already. Spiraling Despair finds its way under XU, but that's still the tag. Oh. Holy cow! Huey just gets it done. The first on this champion is Criminal Man. Rich goes over the wall trying to find some kind of an angle here. It'll be a one for one trade on that one as Dove tries to escape, but Fake God is hot on his heels. He needs a little bit more burst, but he won't quite find it another. just yet. Another oh kill comes in. God. A triple kill for Insanity. This is what I'm talking about. You cannot disrespect the Huey. Oh my God. The severing bolt, man. The QW there. The isolated damage from the Huey is just insane. It's in he landed multiple of those and just executes XU in the pit, then is able to get another one out on Tomo after he went out of the wall to actually take him down as well. 3v5 Baron hold, that's crazy. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. There's the ulti, the spiraling despair, and this is the QW, the isolated execute there. No one else was in it with him. I, do you think that's just a case where XU, you know, just doesn't realize how much damage that's going to be? I, it didn't even feel like they were trying to dodge. I think, and then, I think like, you got to dash the, the Huey root. After you get hit by the root, it's over. But for sure, I think he could have Sejuani queued out of it. Maybe he didn't see it. It's kind of a difficult spell to track sometimes. Yeah, and there's that root again. You, know, you, you called it out. The root, really powerful. I think sometimes underused. Sometimes people, I think, default to using the fear CC way too much or the EE. Uh -huh. The root setting up the QW is so powerful, especially in these chaotic fights where, again, Tomo had cleanse and flash. I don't think he saw the root. I don't think he saw the QW coming through because he could have got out of there. And that's one of the few things you can actually use cleanse on in this fight. If he flashes out of that, it could be pretty different, but Insanity kind of carrying the game. 7-0-1. He had a monster yeah. performance yesterday and was able to bring them back in what was going to look like a loss to Immortals. So back-to-back -back days, his way is looking nuts. It is an Insanity diff here so far. 27 minutes into the game, Tomo Smolder still at 220 stacks. So it is a pretty late evolution. Isaac, you were comparing it earlier to yesterday when Tactical got off to such a bad start. When he played Smolder, still managed to find that final evolution at about 20 
26, 27 minutes or so. It was so. just about 26 on the 26, dot. okay. Even, so Even with having way less stacks early game than Tomo had. Which tells me that since Shopify did not put the same kind of pressure on Tomo in this game, Dignitas has not done a good job facilitating that stacking in the mid-game phases. Tomo just now hitting there at yeah. 27 minutes into the game. This is a critical point for Dignitas, and they really need to be able to stabilize with this, or Insanity is just going to keep running them over. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely have not optimized. I mean, they, they moved him mid at one point, but then shortly after they moved him mid, they just sent him back down towards bot, right? You know, when you're playing around mid, when you can stack off the wave, then take the Raptors, then take the Wolves, you just keep doing this kind of cycle, you get so much value from it. Like, obviously, you still want to get experience and some gold on your jungler, but Smolder does so much more with it, you know, especially when you can really accelerate those stacks. Uh, we saw it. We saw yesterday, Tactical got up well over 300 stacks, and it was to the point where the last time I checked in, it was over a 10% execute, which just it's gets insane. Like, this champion scales to infinity, so if you can get the stacks, it's always worth doing it. The splash damage becomes pretty crazy. Uh, they are going to be looking to fight for this dragon here, not wanting to give up soul over to Shopify, but we'll see. Shopify can find the poke before the fight to deny it. All right. We've still got a two and a half thousand gold lead for Shopify. Tomo trying to get away as B-Boy wants to burst up. Nami Yossi over the top. Tomo's already down. Shopify loses two men. A shutdown. Only with Sanity from Dub. Absolutely massive as Dignitas still has four players ready to go. Rich takes out Boogie. They're flashing after B-Boy. He tries to escape with the wall and won't find him. Now Dub goes riding the Weaver's wall, but Fake God's ready to answer. Dub goes golden, and B-Boy's got to be careful here. He steps away from the rock. He tries oh, to dash back out, but Isles locks down Fake God, and Dub is unstoppable dignitas find their fight man even with tomo getting nothing done in that fight tomo dies pretty much for free watch tomo on the left side of your screen as rich steps up you know b-boy is going to come in tomo goes over and tomo basically just dies 100 to zero wastes both the sums you know it doesn't dodge man. anything and they still are able to win this fight like look at this he flashes after just into more of the culling dies but look at the damage here. Dig over the wall. Such yeah. a good CC combo. And Sanity also gets one shot, though, and he's definitely way more useful of a target than the Smolder. Yeah, when the team has nine kills total and one dude has seven, you cannot afford to lose that dude. Dove trying to go into the back line, find the plays here. B-Boy, nice sidestep away from that initially, but then Isles finding the hook is what really sends it home. Yeah, Dove, I think, did a really good job in that fight. You know, Rich doing well as as well and i mean sandy you called it out and is that strongest member by far dies still has a bounty afterwards which always is a terrible feeling after <laughs> yeah, you give up like a 1k <laughs> shutdown and you still have a bounty um but ding toss take the second dragon we're back around the baron area here trying to find that setup i haven't really been able to get anything going in the side lanes it feels like from shopify the jace has felt like a side note you know it doesn't really feel like fake god has been able to get too involved whatsoever in this one yeah, I will say though, as Jace, as you start to reach more and more items, he's like an okay Hope scaling pick. He can land poke, uh, they don't really have any heals on the other side, and if you can hit Talir or Smolder with QE, I think it's, that's decent enough value to make the pick feel worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the thing is, it's it's got to be hitting Smolder, but it has to be Smolder has to have no minions or anything else around too, right? Because he has BT at this point. You know, we're pretty late into the game, so you are going to be able to heal up pretty quickly, but Isles going over the wall. Isles wants Boogie, and they'll force out the ulti from the bear immediately. XU wanted to see if there might have been a follow-up play to make, but does not connect with the Glacial Prison on anybody else from Shopify's squad. Double control ward in the pit for Baron now. Dignitas trying to make sure they control this objective. One control board over the wall coming out from Shopify, trying to make sure that they at least maintain some little bit of vision on that one. As Dignitas make their way back into the mid lane, this is what I believe for the first time this game here in the past 60 seconds or so, a Dignitas gold lead. Even though it's only a couple hundred, it has been in Shopify's favor the entire time. Otherwise, Shopify now trying to retake control over the topside river. Yeah, so what do you think is the job now here for, you know, for Insanity, for Dove? And what should the mid laners be, be looking to try to get done over these next couple minutes? How do they enable their team, you know, to kind of set up for the next fight? I feel like overall, Dig is playing the comp a bit better. You know, Nautilus keeps landing hooks, and they're finding the CC that Talia can play off of, and they're opening the fights really smoothly like that, whereas I feel like Shopify has just been kind of going through the game off the back of these, like, ridiculous hate play, play plays. Um, I, f I feel like Dig keeps walking into the play roots as well. I think they need to be a little more mindful of dashing out of the root or, like, being careful where he can shoot at. Yeah, he's been doing a really good job. And even, even like, th that placement feels like he's hiding a little bit in the brush, and, and Dig definitely 
uh, losing track of it, especially in the fights, it can be hard you know, when there's so many different things going on. A lot of the effects are pretty loud. Um, but Shopify, a little bit on the back foot. You know, they don't really have any pick. They don't really have any hard engage. So they are kind of dependent upon Dig engaging into them. So we've been talking a lot about Insanity this game and how the way has been carrying Shopify. But the reality of where the game is right now is it's plus 600 gold for Dove on the Talia. He's only one kill behind where Insanity is. He has completed his fourth major non-boots item. Insanity's still working towards that. And for Insanity, it is a massive purchase. The death cap going to be item number four here. So trying to hit that power spike before a fight would be huge for them. But Dignitas do not want to open that window. They're already starting up the Baron. They're daring Shopify to come and try to answer this. The TP will show up. The Baron's still at 6,000 as Dignitas disengage. Yep, exactly. You know, they knew Jace went down towards bottom side. I think they saw him on that ward crossing over by the enemy blue. Um, so saw him going down towards bot. They wanted to get that TP. As soon as the TP comes out, they weren't looking for an actual fight. They just back right off. Look at that poke, though. Wow. Down Smolder onto Isles. Isles are going crazy, yeah. Isles not too happy about dealing with that way, man. This champion is so powerful from such a long range. And remember, this is still before we combine the two sticks into the hack. Once he gets that massive AP bonus, this dude is just going to completely destroy the entire team fight. As B-Boy, again, just trying to look to trade really swiftly with this on-hit build, with this pro or proc, I should say, since it's the Storm Razor plus the Rapid Fire all together. Dignitas trying to stay grouped up. Double buffs ready to go here on the whole team. And they'll push up as five or push up into the river as five. Yeah, okay. now it's a question of just, you know, Shopify looking to try to control around that Baron area. Obviously, the idea is always, oh, if Ding does go for the Dragon, we take the Baron. I don't feel like those plays ever really work. Oh. Fake up may have just caught himself. Fake God, that one's gonna hurt. Dove is dominating now. XU trying to find a follow-up, but B-Boy dashes away in time. Dignitas with a 5v4 for the next 45 seconds, but the Drake is spawning now. Dignitas should be able to secure this one for free, and Fake God is a costly mistake on that one. Yeah, I mean, he takes a trade in mid. He still had his flash available. I think he went hammer form and just kind of went in and, and killed himself. Uh, yeah, kills bad man. I mean, Nar just jumped on him and ulted him into a wall. Yeah, that's that's tough. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> now it's now it's sole point. Yeah, uh, Dignitas. That's three straight dragons for Dig, and uh, we have four if you count Smolder. He's got 305 stacks, so got they already the got stacks, their yeah. elder in. Man, 300 I think is the benchmark where it hits 10% on the execute. Let me double check that. Uh, it still says it's just about 9%. So I think it's it's got to be really close now to that 10% execute. Yeah, um, he's gonna hit RFC up. right now too or yeah. soon, and then yeah. that's going to be a, another big spike. Yeah, RFC is so nice on Smolder because it extends that Q range, of course, right? You're able yeah. to get those long range Qs, especially this late in the game where you have that massive true damage burn. You're splashing it from the 125 stack upgrade as well, uh, and it becomes there very, it very difficult to actually play around it. All right, we are hitting critical mass for so many of these champions. Dove now with a needlessly large rod in inventory working towards his final item towards that full build. You can see the hat now completed for Insanity. The Rapid Fire Cannon you guys are talking about on the Smolder. Lucian also nearly full build for B-Boy with that BF sword sitting in inventory. It's going to come down to just the blink of an eye, I feel like, with the way that these team fights have been playing out, with how fast these health bars have been exploding. It's Shopify once again on the defense as Dignitas try to push up, sit down some vision, and force their opponents back. And they're trying to punk, uh, poke out Tomo, but he is just going to be able to fly over the wall there as... Uh... Boy was dashing forward. It's, it's just so tough, right? And all they can do is kind of sit back, try to get this poke, try to find some sort of a window to find a way in. They can't be the team that's proactive. That's always the difficulty with these sort of compositions where Dignitas just puts out so much pressure just by kind of stepping up. Nice little chunk Whoa. there from Boy, but it's just flash forward for Miles. Here comes the Weaver's Wall. It's insanity getting caught out. A huge shutdown for Dig. That's the most important player on Shopify Rebellion, and they don't even lose anybody here in the trade. Rich was taken low, but his flash got him out in time dignitas with a really important move there yeah that's a huge pick over onto insanity they don't get boogie critically they are going to be going over towards that bear and you can see they're already onto it trying to force shop fight to come into them they can look for the turn and there's dove catching boogie boogie in trouble man the lollipop hook finds him dove needs a little bit more damage but now the hammer for fake up wants to go to the skies b-boy grabs the kill back on isles but the fight ain't done yet rich has rejoined the fight after using the unleashed teleport and dignitas they may have lost their support but they killed the enemy jungler this should be free bear yeah, it's looking like it's going to be there. Baron, B-Boy, and Zazel trying to get something done. The TP's coming back here from Fake God. We'll see if they can make a miracle happen. Rich has the Narbar charged. He's ready to go. Mega Nar, the ulti, ready to cast. 
Baron down to 2,000 HP. This should be secured nice and easy. XQ's got it. Now Dignitas has to exfiltrate. B-Boy does not want to get any closer on this one. Dove's going to be chunked there a little bit by the accelerated shock blast. Insanity's trying to join in on the chase. B-Boy jumps up, calling over the wall. Dove in trouble. There's the shutdown with the credit back over to B-Boy, helping Insanity finish him off. Dignitas have lost their mid laner for the next 60 seconds. Now the tough thing is there's, there's nothing for them to get. There's no objective on the map. They can't run over to a dragon and grab a soul so they can push up a wave, maybe get a tier two mid or something. But Shopify, at the end of the day, they're just going to eliminate the Baron buff from Dove, and that's about it. Dignitas still come out so well from that big trade. All right, talk us through this uh, replay here, Bo Belter. All right, uh, I think they had a really good engage. Lucian dashes in. They immediately come with the Talia ult, and yet they, they get the one shot on Huey by comboing with Talia combo. This feels so good as Talia, by the way. Just have this easy CC to play off of. Nar hits Mega, and he's juggling aggro of like two, three people. I feel like the fight is just pretty much over after the play one shot, honestly. Yeah, I mean, we're just seeing the power of that engage, right? The power of the combo, you know, the guaranteed setup there with the depth charge from the Nautilus. You know, Isles flashes forward, sets up his mid laner to be able to get that kill. A lot of damage put out by Bevoy, but yeah. not amounting to much of a result, unfortunately, for him as, you know, it was all kind of just into the back of Rich, who was able to flash out and survive. And on the other side, they couldn't do the same. And look at that Q poke just through the minion from Tomo. It is just getting so deadly here at this point. He is now over that 10% XQ benchmark. Uh, it's 6.5% of your health as the burn in true damage and a 10% XQ on every Q, let alone that base damage that's coming in through too. All right, gentlemen, we have been trading Drakes for the past 39 minutes. It's finally time, 30 seconds from now, for the soul to go over one way or the other. Big chunk on the aisles. They're taking him down to about 1,000 HP. It's a 2K gold lead for Dig, but we've already been talking about how many items are in the inventories. It's not going to be that impactful at this point in the game. Dignitas with control over the bot side river. Shopify trying to check into it, but the range and the power of Tomo's smolder is doing some work on these guys. Tomo still looking to shoot another one of those snot bubbles over the wall. And Shopify have lost half HP on both support and jungler. The Drake is alive. We'll see if Dignitas can just force this down. Another one of those smolder cues, yeah. just finding the poke on B-Boy. Yes, he has life steal to heal it back up, but Dignitas seemed to have complete and total control over the bot side river, and Shopify Rebellion will yield the Cloud Soul. They're just gonna have to give it up. I mean, yeah, B-Boy has some life steal, but, but Boogie was down to half HP, Zazel was down to half HP, they had no vision. It'd be so difficult to actually walk in there knowing that the engage is all on the other side. There's just no way to really fight it out in these situations. Uh, unless you're first to the objective and they're walking into you, then you can get a lot more done. Insanity hasn't really been as effective these last couple of fights. He's getting targeted, he's getting burst down, and it's making his job incredibly difficult. I, I feel like they have no answer to this smolder at this point. They have no way of mm. getting on top of him. He's just standing at max range, just queuing everyone, just chunking people out, and, and he's still just stacking harder and harder. Rich may have got caught here. B-Boy putting a lot of damage into him. They're not gonna find the snipe there. With the way, B-Boy trying to get away, escape. From that Weaver's Wall, Boogie now locked up next, gets back out with half HP. XU has to flash back out to guarantee that he survives. There was a lot thrown out there, but no dead bodies on either team. Tomo had to use the cleanse. Blue will be secured by Shopify. They don't give that over to Dignitas. And your job just gets even harder now with the Cloud Soul on the other side. So much additional move speed to this team. If it wasn't already hard enough to escape the engage, if it wasn't already hard enough to chase someone down for a kill, it just got that much harder here for Shopify. So Dignitas feels feels happy to just honestly keep farming out to keep stacking on Smolder and look to play towards these objectives. You know, that has been the name of the game for them. They're not really overextending. They're not really giving any opportunities to Shopify. And it feels like a game where unless there's an easy opportunity given to them, they're just gonna play for Elder. They're just gonna wait for Baron, wait for Elder, just keep stacking up these objectives. So I'll go ahead and ask you guys, Pobetter, I'll start with you. What do you put Shopify's chances in this game now? Because it really does feel like the cards are entirely stacked against them. Yeah, I mean, maybe like 15, 20%. I feel yeah. like this Lucian is six slot. He can still dash forward and potentially one shot Smolder, Smolder miss positions. But I, I think it's Smolder's game to kind of lose. I think it's Dig's game to lose, especially now that they have the soul. Um, there's no really easy way to get on top of Smolder besides just dashing at him, I feel like. Yeah, there's not really anything they have to actually catch anyone. And look at how much damage. That's one Q on a yeah. B-Boy. 
lost about 40% of his HP there. That's <laughs> rough, man. You could dash in. He just cues you and flies away. <laughs> uh, and you're going to be coming out worse for wear. It feels like Tomo getting pretty confident, though. Yeah, Lucian going for that dash. B-Boy trying to punish however he can. Tomo loses about one third HP, but again, both of the AD carries have so much lifesteal because of the presence of bloodthirsters in both inventories. Unless it's 100 to zero, it's not really gonna mean much. You can see though, Dignitas a little bit nervous as soon as that dash comes in, Isles instantly lock it in. You know, he, he pops the lock in immediately. You know, they are concerned about how much damage could come in. Uh, they know probably the only way they could really lose this is Tomo getting randomly one shot. So uh, they're gonna be playing around that. We have the Knight's Foul for him. We have the locket for him. You know, this kind of support itemization obviously does make a lot of sense at this point in the game. Sejuani also picking up a Knight's Vow as well, uh, which is on the Talia. So, you know, really just trying to get these additional items for your carries for the core members right now. All you got to do is keep them safe and itemize to do so. So, funny enough, talking about carries, talking about itemization, it's a 3,000 gold lead for Dig, and the entire gold lead is the difference between Talia and the Huey. Dub is full six items, and Sanity's still only sitting on five plus control wards. TP coming in now. Shopify trying to disengage. The Mom flies out, but it only hits B-Boy. Dignitas not getting a whole lot out of that one here just yet, but the Glacial Prison finding Insanity, forcing him to save him from the CC as Tomo has to try to flash away. Now Shopify again on the back foot. Insanity hit by the seismic shove. That could be the pick that does it. Dove finds him, and now Shopify has to try to defend, but Fake God's going to die next. Tomo taking the kill. It's 5v3 for the next 50 seconds. It looks like they may just be going over towards Baron or something. No, they're just going to stay mid. They want to try to push for the end here and try to close out this game. It was a great McHale's from Zazel on the initial, says one of y'all, but it just didn't matter. Insanity gets caught, Insanity goes down, and now it's B-Boy, Boogie, and Zazel trying to make a miracle happen. Well, it's gonna take a whole lot, man. Isles here on the front. He just barely ends up falling, but they'll trade him back for Boogie. And if you're Dig, you're totally fine with that. Still 25 seconds before Insanity's back on the board, and you got a 4v2 against Zazel and B-Boy. It's all about the Lucian, and Rich slams it back into the wall, follows it up with the wall up. That's gonna be GG. Zazel can't hold it. Dignitas with the four-man squad here at the very end, 19 to 13. They'll take that. Shopify Rebellion. Dignitas picking up their fifth win here, taking down Shopify. It was a long one. We've had some long games today. 44 minutes on this. <laughs> 400 and something stacks on the smolder. 471 stacks by the end of the game. Woo. Pretty ridiculous. That's a 13% instant execute on the queue. That's nasty. Is that like uh, the most stacks anyone has had? Or what, what, what in the like LCS, I think, for sure. In the okay. LCS, for sure. I can't, I can't speak to, uh, to globally, um, but maybe we can actually get a check on that because that is a, a pretty crazy game. Bottom so much 